I want to make three brief points here today. One, the science on all of this is worse than you know and getting worse all the time. The only thing that's changed in the 20 years since I wrote The End of Nature is our understanding that both the magnitude and the pace of climate change are larger than we would have expected, much larger. Um, uh, you know, The End of Nature was the, the first book on all of this and, uh, 20 years ago, and at the time we would have guessed that what we have so far, a one degree increase in global average temperature, would be just the kind of threshold of the global warming uh, moment um, and that big changes would still be some years down the road. It turns out that the earth was more finely balanced than we realized and that things are happening now with extreme speed. Uh, there's a lot of momentum in this system and it may be hard, it is going to be hard to break it. Um, James Hansen, our greatest climatologist uh, who I've known for a very long time um, and a very brave man, defied an, uh, a gag order from the Bush administration uh, about this time last year and went and gave a speech at the American Geophysical Union where he said in quite blunt language for a uh, senior scientist that unless we were able to reverse the flow of carbon into the atmosphere globally in the next 10 years, then we would pass certain thresholds, 450 parts per million CO2 in the atmosphere, that would make it impossible to any longer uh, uh, guarantee or even really hope for the stability of the great ice sheets above Greenland and the West Antarctic. Uh, at which point, the already miserable, difficult, world-changing effects of climate change would become catastrophic on a science fiction scale. Um, um, uh, and therefore, we have our work cut out for us in extremely short order. That's the science. We can come back to it all, all you want. I want to go on and talk about the politics now for a little while. Um, we have got to figure out quickly how to move Congress and the White House to take not small and incremental action, but very large action. That goal of reducing or of reversing the flow of carbon into the atmosphere worldwide in the next 10 years now, nine or eight years, can only happen if first there's wildly ambitious leadership in this country on this issue and then we parlay it into a real international commitment over a very short time. We finally in the last year begun to see a movement emerge. It's not yet big enough to inspire our leaders to do the very heavy lifting that needs to be done and if they're to if their courage is to be bucked up. It will only happen, I think, if we have some kind of profound movement around these questions quickly. A movement, frankly, that has the same kind of urgency and moral passion and seriousness that marked the civil rights movement a generation ago. In January of this year, working with six students at, at Middlebury College, um, we launched a website called stepitup07.org. We asked people if they would organize demonstrations in their communities. 11 weeks later, on April 14th, there were 1,400 of these demonstrations in all 50 states. It was the largest day of grassroots environmental protests since Earth Day in 1970, and it had significant effect. Our goal was to call for 80% cuts in carbon emissions by 2050. It was remarkably successful. Um, it's the beginning of a movement, but movements by their nature need to keep moving. So we're going to do a second iteration of these demonstrations, and we're going to do them on, with your help on November 3rd of this year. Uh, again, not very far away, about three months distant. November 3rd is uh, a year before, just about a year before the Saturday, that's a year before the next federal elections. And this time, we want very much to make it clear to people that we need not vague promises about you know how they're opposed to global warming and what a terrible thing it would be but serious commitments about what they're going to do and how soon they're going to do it 
When we did this in April, we took as our text the American landscape, and people did these demonstrations in all kinds of iconic places that demonstrated the effects of climate change. We had people who did underwater demonstrations on the coral reefs off Key West, and you know, uh, thousands of people in blue shirts who formed a sea of people in the streets of Lower Manhattan to show where the tide line would be once the ocean started to rise. And, People in Jacksonville, Florida, who winched a yacht 20 feet into the air with a crane to show where the new sea level would be, and on and on and on. This time in November, we're asking people to take American history as their texts and to rally in places that commemorate great American leaders of the past. People who, though they were not saints, rose to the difficult occasions that their times demanded of them. So there will be rallies on top of Mount Washington and you know at Martin Luther King junior high schools all across America uh, 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 we've had um, we, we had a particularly was friends of ours in Rhode Island just wrote to say that they're doing one um, uh, at the church where Jack Kennedy married uh, Jackie Onassis um, um, people at coast there were a few uh, meteor blades uh, uh, Jerome Paris and a few others uh, uh, did diary occasionally about it, and once or twice they even made it up to the rec list for a little while. It's the kind of politics of protest and of demonstration that are just as important in stiffening the spine, in delineating who the good guys and the bad guys are, um, and in helping us sharpen this issue so that in the next two years, which is really all the time we have left, we can get or not get the legislation that we need rammed through Washington and then go about the horribly difficult work of trying to figure out how to make the same thing happen on a worldwide basis. They don't call it global warming for nothing. Um, it is a daunting, da probably the single most daunting task humans have yet faced, but it is extraordinarily, uh, it is extraordinarily useful Nice to know that um, um, finally, finally, after many, many years of nothing going on, um, um, of feeling like one was sort of shouted, shouting in a room where no one could hear you, um, we're beginning to see, that's a carbon footprint. Um, <laughs> um, we're beginning to see real profound, that's Penn State, I think. Um, CO2. Uh, we're beginning to see action, and that action has to be in the form, that's 800 school kids in uh, Park City, Utah, uh, against the snow. That's a polar bear in a bikini, because they'll need them soon. Um, um, all across America, people were moving, moving fast, moving hard. That movement has to continue. If it does continue, that's Seattle. Um, there's some real possibility that we will at least make a decision one way or another about this question and not just slide uncomprehending into the most um, 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 traumatic future that human beings can imagine. When we do Step It Up to in November, the sort of tagline for this one is, who's a leader? And we're asking politicians to decide if they're going to be politicians or leaders on this. And we're asking them to sign on to what's been this emerging over the summer pledge put together by a wide coalition of groups that are now calling themselves One Sky. Um, here are the, uh, the key parts, at least as they are at the moment. It's still a little in flux, but that we're going to be asking people to sign on for. 80% by 2050 cuts. That's the long-term target. 10% emission reductions in three years from when you start. Third thing is no new coal at all. Um, you know, as Hansen says, when you've got the sequestration plans all together, come talk to us about it. But that's going to be a while and, you know, for the moment. And we're winning on this one. Uh, coal plants are going down around the country. Fourth one, and it and that I think is important because it starts this task of connecting with the rest of movement is a ag aggressive green jobs core campaign. So those are the things we're going to be asking people for. 
Energize America has the whole long, powerful list of stuff that needs to happen, but it's beyond what one can communicate in the course of a campaign or a demonstration or something when you only get a little bit of sound. Don't get lost in the thicket of particular policy details. We need to drive basic political demand for ambitious, fast, deep action on climate change. And that's, you know, that's enough from, you know, the sort of upwelling from the bottom of politics to then allow this discussion to go on in Washington. But it's in the grassroots we have to have that more difficult, basic, powerful, political organizing discussion. 